Hey everybody, I'm Doug. This is Doug Does Tech. Today we're talking about session control policies and conditional access and Defender for Cloud Apps. How to set that whole solution up from end to end. We'll cover it here where we're gonna walk through how to use it, how to set it up, and kind of go from there. Let's hop into it and let's get in talking about what the solution can do for you. All right, let's begin with the end in mind and demonstrate what exactly we're doing and talking about here. So here I am, I'm about to sign in from a unmanaged device into my organization. And as part of that sign in, essentially what's happened is I'm getting interrupted in my access to Exchange Online. This is an optional feature. You don't actually have to have this show to your end user, but this is how you can tell it's working. End user is able to log in click continue and access everything that they need to about their organization. So they can access their email, they can see you know, exactly what's going on and all of the stuff that's happening in their organization. And you know, pretty much here, they can do everything that they need to, they can get their job done. However, we have some guardrails on them that's preventing them from doing certain things. So if they try to go and download from our environment, we can come in and intercept that download and say, that's not allowed. So if you wanted to give access to someone and let them have remote access to whatever application you need, Salesforce, Microsoft 365, you can come in and you know basically have this compensation control in here to stop them from accessing it. So great technology. You know, what's going on under the hood is really this here, right? So what we're doing is essentially looking at the sign-in activity and the machine that someone's coming from and then using conditional access, we can say, we don't like that scenario or in these conditions, proxy their connection to Defender for Cloud Apps. Once the session is inside of Defender for Cloud Apps, then we can set up different policies to basically control access to it. So we can control upload, download, copy, paste, and depending on the application, you might be able to do a little bit more interesting other things. Like um, I think there's some Salesforce specific activities that you can do, or like in Teams, you can block someone from chatting. It's kind of some interesting edge pocket cases. But for the most part, most companies that I do this with, they can use this to control download. And this might be a part of your holistic strategy. Um, I have a series on conditional access that I use and I call it the secure endpoint, which uses this as a BYOD scenario to help allow people to do this. And so it's a great control that you can use. So hopefully that's what covers technology, what we're gonna be doing. Let's get into now the hard part, setting it up, because it's not always easy or obvious how you can set up the solution. So let's hop in here and walk through it. So here we are in security.microsoft.com and we went down to settings and in cloud apps here to control and access and set up this whole thing. In the bottom here is the Defender for Cloud Apps section and down here under conditional access app control, you can see there's all the settings related to it. You also notice down here under conditional access app control, it's here is the apps that you've set up for this. So what you can see here is, yeah, it's all blank by default. And if you hit the add button, it's really not obvious what you should be doing. And so it causes a lot of confusion for people that I've seen. And so I'm gonna walk you through the easy way to set this up, which is essentially coming down here in setting up app onboarding and maintenance. So this is gonna be the first step that you're gonna need to do. You need to come in and put your UPN in for this and then basically set up your account or a testing account with the ability to manage the application. From there, you then need to go in onboard the applications. So this is the big, really like hard to miss, hard to, hard to remember step that you need to happen here. The second one is you need to go into conditional access and set up a policy to send the session over to it. So to do that, it's a simple type of policy here. What we're gonna do is do um, MCAS. So we need to pick an account and basically set this up so that the end user in this um, is added to this so that we can then set up the app. So you're gonna target your app and then what you need to do is say, hey, anything that I want to set up here, we're gonna proxy their connection and control it. So in my case, I'm gonna pick just the Office 365 app, but if you need to do the admin apps or Salesforce, you're gonna follow the same procedure in here. 
And in my case, you know, you I'm not going to do much filtering here, but if you're doing um, different options, you may want to come in and filter out like, hey, you know, it only want to work on, you know, uh, browser sessions, right? This policy only really works on browser, so you can filter that on it. And then if you wanted to filter out like your corporate owned devices, you know, you could do that also as setting it up. All right. So that's first set. Next, we need to set up the session control policy and have that in here. So it's really easy. Use conditional access control. And then what we're going to do is do the block download one. Uh, actually, let's do the monitor only one to start with. And then we'll, we'll go from there. And just like that, our policy is set. Make sure you have a backup account that you can get access if anything goes wrong while you're targeting this and setting these up. But this should be pretty safe to do. And so we're going to go turn that on and then wait for the app to take. I'm gonna pause this for a second and while I wait for the policies to sync and then I'll come back and show you the next setup procedures. All right, so I'm back. So after you set up the conditional access policies, what you need to do in this case is actually go to the apps to trigger the policy to set up the session. And here you can see we waited quite a bit. I think I gave it 15 minutes just to be safe, came back and now I'm ready to set this up. And so here you can see, I'm able to click on it and continue to it. A lot of the Microsoft 365 apps will auto set themselves up. The key is you just need to go to them and make sure they're added into the interface. So in this case, yeah, we need to go in and go to you know OneDrive and access the OneDrive application so that it makes itself set up. Same thing with SharePoint. Viva, Engage, all of the things, you basically need to go to them as a one-time action as this admin, this onboarding admin account, so that they will then go ahead and set themselves up. So make sure you go in, go through all of the stuff that you need to do, and then um, set it up. Ooh, this is a new one, an unrecognized domain. We'll skip that, see if it gets in here and set up here. Maybe it's not quite ready for everything yet. Um, maybe I didn't give it enough time. Eh, it looks like it's doing its thing, but it's starting the process. So essentially what you're going to do again, go to each one of those apps, go through this process. And then once you're there, once it's available to you, it should start showing up in your security.microsoft portal. So I'm back in the security of Microsoft portal and we'll now go, um, and refresh it just to make sure everything triggers properly. And then what we can do is go to that, um, session control policies and see what apps are now set up here. So it's kind of down here, conditional access app control apps. And just like that, now we can see some of these things are available in our environment. And so I can start taking advantage of it from a policy perspective. And that's pretty much it from a setup procedure of like enabling the apps. You'll come in here, enable it, and then basically you'll be able to onboard it. The hard thing becomes if there is like a custom application, you need to do maybe a little bit more groundwork on them to set them up. So if you have something like Salesforce or a custom app that your organization wrote or a website that you host that you want to protect it, you'll come in here, you'll do the setup procedures uh, just like we did before. But then as you'll see, you'll, you'll click on them and it'll be like, hey, available controls, it'll be missing the session control policies. And at that point, if you see that, you need to come in and click on the app and then enable it for that control. I'll do it another app a little bit. I'll, I'll go and figure out a way to set that up so you can see it. Um, but that's essentially, you're gonna come in, set these up, and then you're gonna be taking advantage of it. All right, so once it's set up, what we need to do is go back into our conditional access policies, and then we can start using it for the governance action that we want. So uh, I did the monitor only to set it up, when you're ready to switch it out to do something more dramatic, that's where the block download option will come in. These two options here, they they say they're in preview, but they've, they've said preview for like three years now or two years now. And so you can take advantage of them. They work really well. I use them a lot. And if you just need to do something simple like block download, you're good to go. You'll notice here there is also an option for a custom control that you can take advantage of. And essentially what the difference is, is basically this requires additional work setting up a full MCAS policy or Defender for Cloud Apps policy uh, to basically control that. And so essentially what you're doing is you're handing off the session from um, 
Azure Active Directory or Intra ID, and then sending it to conditional access and, or sorry, Defender for Cloud Apps, and then Defender for Cloud Apps catches it and then puts additional policies on it. So let's go ahead and look at what that would look like and the different policies that you could do in here. So on the left in security.microsoft, we're gonna to go to policy management. And then in here, we have conditional access, right? And so there's another set of conditional access controls you can do in here. And there's access policies and session policies. Access policies can be applied to everything in the environment. So this is another way to inspect sign-ins and can do like basically block access on it. Um, and then session policy is what we're talking through here, which is, um, hey, if end user is doing this inside of that web-based session, block that download. Access policies can be applied to every sign-in across the board. If you're using Thick Client, all that kind of stuff, it can inspect for Tor browsers, IP address, client, specific stuff. You could just very, very granular with the control plane here. Session policies only apply to the web-based access and letting you control it, right? Once you set it up here, you get some options that you can take advantage of from a deployment perspective, right? So in this case, the template that I'm gonna use is block downloads based on real-time content, and it's gonna kind of pre-set up this stuff for you. In this case, the control type is control file download with inspection, and that would let you come in and inspect and say, hey, is this end user trying to download credit cards? If so, block it. You don't have to inspect, you can just come in and say none, and that's gonna be just the same as your block download option, and then say, hey, they can't access this. These filters here is where you can get very specific on different levels of access that you can do in here. So you can get uh, all sorts of different control plane to say uh, a deeper level of inspection on this thing. And so what we'll do lots of times is if you wanted to do a specific policy for say exchange, we can come in and say, whenever someone's accessing exchange, send it to conditional access app control. And then here in conditional access ask, app control, we can control those activities. And again, come in and say, okay, allow access, but block downloads or control the downloads, but put a sensitivity label on the document if someone's downloading it from our environment. And so a lot of good stuff that you can do as part of this. And essentially you can set each of them up and get really granular with your policies. To do the full control, what you may want to do is um, have a couple different policies. So I showed you the first policy that I lots of times do with the control download option. They have this control actions option or activity type that you can also use to basically say, hey, I don't want people to cut, copy, paste, and print from our environment because those are different than download as a control. And so if you are wanting to do full lockdown, you can come in and say, hey, don't allow them to cut, copy, or paste and block that kind of stuff in here. Again, you can use content inspection to block it in here. I don't know if I showed you that one before, but um, here is like a, another you know sample app that I have in set up in my environment. And you can see if I try to copy it's also blocking that behavior. And so good control that you can take advantage of. Um, I forgot to mention it. One way that you know that the session control policy is working in your environment is the redirection of the URLs. So when I set up this for you know Engage or uh, Yammer, whatever it's called now, um, you can see instead of going to the regular Microsoft URL, I'm instead being redirected to this MCAS MS. And so that's a great way to essentially discover, hey, yeah, I am coming into this site and the session control policy is working. The redirect happened in this. And so great technology, really nice benefit there. Um, let me show you how to set up a custom app because that can be important. It's a little bit of a different one. So give me a palm to pause real quick while I go set it up so you can see it um, in this environment. All right, I'm back. So let me show you how to set up a custom application just in case you ever run into the need to set up a custom app with Defender for Cloud Apps. So um, what we did is essentially I have a site that I'm hosting internally for demonstration purposes. It's the Azure Static Web App. Essentially I've added it again to a conditional access app control policy. And then I've set this up with the monitor only option. So once it's in here, then you're gonna give it some time. In my case, I had to give it a quite a bit of time. 
and then we need to set it up, right? So I go to the site again, and here you can see this app is not recognized, configure the app in Defender for Cloud Apps. So this is where that onboarding option comes into place. And uh, apparently we're erroring out. <laughs> so that's great. I'm gonna hit confirm. All right, I had to give a little bit more time and now I can uh, show you how it's gonna work. So in here on the say page, um, ready to set it up and now it's showing as discovered and ready to be used. In this case, we have these unidentified apps that we can then go ahead and set up. And here is my app, Orange Flower. And so what we're gonna do is this is a, a custom app uh, and set it up. We're gonna set this up basically manually. And so I'm gonna call this uh, YouTube. And we can select a category, it doesn't really matter. Uh, business intelligence, that's what it is. And the score, we can set that up. And then the key thing is setting up the use conditional access app control. It may require you to adjust the URLs if you need to come in and you know basically you know, do some advanced options. You may need to gather some user defined domains. And then essentially then you can add it here as an app. And now we'll come back in and wait. So this can be a, a little bit of a, a process to set this up and uh, use it in this case. Uh, do I have to set an address subscription? Okay, good. Um, to actually configure it and have it start showing in the environment, but eventually it should go in here. So uh, I'm gonna pause this, come back in, and, and hopefully we can complete the next steps. All right, I think I gave it enough time, so we'll go ahead and try to log in again and test it. And if I can remember my... There it goes. Fingers crossed, we'll see if we get it right. And there we go. Uh, and so we are set here and we should now see it and get it to work. And yep, yep, we're in. So again, the telltale sign that this is working for you is this mcas.ms option. And this is where you can see kind of all this data in here about what's going on and how you're using it. Um, you'll also notice down here, there is you know additional information about the session that you can see of like what's going on and you can turn on like recording of the session. So if stuff's going wrong and you know, it's like not, nothing's working right, you're having problems, you can turn on to access this in this like test mode to, to usually use this options here. And you can look up usually like the domains that are a part of this, their apps are showing in here. And then you can kind of go from there of like, hey, yeah, if I'm trying to download from here, yeah, block it and, and have that control plane there. So uh, I hope this helps someone else out there get up and running with the solution and start protecting their apps and controlling downloads of it. Um, good luck and stay safe out there.